so we're going to talk today about following on from what we talked about last week, which was learning to cast 70 feet or going from 50 to 70. We're going to look at the next jump up, which is how to throw, how to cast 100 feet, which is a huge milestone for many people, I think, Nick. I think that's um, you know it's, you know it's almost it's almost as good as catching a ten pound trout, isn't it? Catching a cutting a hundred <laughs> feet. Time to get the cigar. In. So, and the funny thing is, I don't think it's very much different. It's 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 kind of doing everything that we did really well. It's doing what you did well at seventy feet, but we're making one other key adjustment here, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about stands and in particular open stands. Um, it's possible to cast a hundred. We know it's possible to cast a hundred feet closed stands, but it's just easier open stands, and it's something you need to learn in a way. So I think now is a good time to start to start to bring that in. So open stance, as the name suggests, I have my feet are shoulder width apart, but you'll notice that they're not square. My left foot is like this. And my right foot is like that. And the heels are on an imaginary centre line. And I also bend my knees a little bit to give me a nice sense of balance. And I know Paul does the same thing. What do you call it, Paul? You you like to like, imagine you're standing on something, don't you? Standing on a snowboard or a, or a, or a surfboard. So you've got your low centre of balance, which is good if you're on a boat and you're standing up taking shots and the, and the boat rocks, you can still hopefully stay in the boat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what's a nice thing as well, a lot of people tend to cast with the top half of their body for distance, which is not what you want to do. And we'll get we'll get a little bit into it further on in the video. But what that problem does or can do is you tend to turn down at the end of the forward cast, which is not what we want to do. We want to launch upwards when we're casting. So this so a good cast starts from the ground up and works its way up to the, the hand to the rod. Yeah. So that's a nice way of looking at it. So anyway, so open stance. So we have the feet shoulder width apart and my feet are oriented like that and I've bent my knees. And also what's important is to, to use some torso twists. So I'm twisting the top half of my body. So why is that significant? So with the closed stance, my hand is over the knee, my elbow is over the knee, and everything is nice and straight. So the problem with that is with distance, we need more stroke length. And with the open stance, what we can do is we can twist our top half of the body to get our shoulder out of the way to allow us to track this hand straight. Exactly what Nick said, but I'll just emphasize it, right? So if I'm casting at you, the point is, for close stands, for accuracy, we we're bringing our hand to our shoulder. When we want, when we're making a longer cast, we want to move this more. Maybe we want to bring a bit more body movement into it, a bit more um, uh, transfer of mass from the from the bottom coming up. So we're going to bring this hand. Our shoulder's now in the way. We don't want to take the rod out to the side. We want to come through where the shoulder is. So in order to do that, we have to turn the shoulder. And then when we come back again, we have to, when we come back, we turn, we once again turn in. So our, our hand is in front of our shoulder as we launch. And I check that with all of my students. So I ask them to make a back cast. Let me just, I'll do one here. The, front, the angle might be a bit funny on the camera, but if I make that back cast, bang. And then, I, so I've turned, and then I just ask them to turn their torso back again straight. And you'll see that the hand is still in front of the shoulder. So what you sometimes see, what you often see is something like this. And then you ask them to turn back again and you find out the hand is not in front of the shoulder. That's very, very common, right? And that basically means you have cast off at an angle that's not straight. So you want to come through the shoulder. So it's a nice little check. Back to you, Nick. Brilliant, Paul. Yeah, and just, just to add to that a little bit as well, when you... When we, when we talk about getting the hand out of the way, we have to twist our top half of the body because if we don't, then the hand can go out to the side. So in my case, I'm right-handed. So if I don't twist, my hand will go out to my right. And then when you come forward, 
the line will end up hooking to the left, which is a tracking fault. It can hit the rod, it can hit the, it can hit the line, can collide with the line as well. So it's important to get this top half of the body moving, as as Paul says, to get this hand moving nice and straight. Yeah. I think yeah. that's I think I think that's one of the, the keys. Yeah, it helps lengthen up the stroke, doesn't it? Oh, we'll, we'll, it really, does, yeah. we'll really get into that as we go forward. But I think it's a nice thing to start to think about now and keeping it reasonably straight. Um, and I love that thing you said there with, with the with the car starts at the ground and comes up. I think that's perfect, right? Because ultimately, I mean, I know we're going to talk about this more later, but ultimately we shift weight, we turn the torso, we bend the elbow, we stop shifting weight, we stop turning the torso, we flip the wrist. I mean, that's basically the the, the, the element that make up the back cast, isn't it? Definitely, um, yes. And I, and I mean, we were talking about this long before when we were start, starting to talk about this series about tracking. and it progressively becomes more important. Tracking is this straight path of the rod tip coming backwards and forwards. And even at 100 feet, I don't think it's, it, I mean, you can still throw 100 and it's not perfectly straight, but as as it should be straighter than if you're throwing 70. If you're swinging the rod right out to the side, you know, you've got this big open loop going on the back cast, that's going to rob you as distance. So it should be straight through the shoulder, straight behind you and straight forward. Delayed, delayed rotation makes a massive, massive difference. And I think it goes back to how people cast as well, because I think in the in the in the UK especially, I don't I don't know what it is, but there's there's a thing about strapping this rod to your forearm and casting like this. And Bonded. then you end up rotating through the stroke like that, especially if you use force. Um, a lot of people tend to hit it as soon as the back cast is straightened and if you if if you do hit it as well the the rod tends to go in an arc which obviously makes the fly leg go in an arc as well which doesn't go as straight as possible so yeah we need well, to know. we need why to is, why is it taught like this what, i don't I mean, know how did this happen it's, it's absolutely Just using crazy. no wrist it's absolutely crazy it makes no sense it makes sense. It's, it's 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 less efficient than as as uh, we said in our last video. If we think about using the force to stop the forearm and letting the wrist flick, mm -hmm. that is much more efficient than trying to drive it like a piston backwards and forwards. And and it hurt that that hurts my shoulder doing yeah, that. Yeah, it, it's and, and it's, it's tiring. It's tiring. It if, you, if you're doing that, you're going to be tired by the end of the day because you're trying to put force through the stroke as opposed to just flipping, you know, just stop blocking. The force is to block or to break the arm and then allow the wrist to flip. And that, I mean, that really is the key on that delivery, isn't it? I mean, it's the key to a good back cast, but for the launch, you know, this 100 foot cast, it's about making that final movement, that final rotation at the end, like throwing a stone. Definitely. Yeah. And for a hundred foot cast, you don't need your hand to go any further back really than your shoulder. Cause for long belly lines, double tapers, I think, I think we worked it out, didn't we, Paul? I think we need to carry about 65, 70 feet. That's with a three meter leader. And I've got a five weight line on here. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about 70 foot carry. So carry, we, we measure from our line hand to the end of the fly line, not mm -hmm. including the leader. Um, so a nice thing to, to learn that is to just put the line down behind you. And delayed rotational drag basically is keeping this rod, rod angle the same for as long as possible and then apply the force as a rotation at the end. And you can see it as well. You'll get some really nice chisel shaped loops if you do it, if you do it properly. And mostly that's down to having a, a nice grip. So when I'm casting distance, I change my grip. So I don't use thumb on top like I would for accuracy. I use what's called the V grip, which allows you to have a more floppier and more floppier wrist and a faster wrist than using thumb on top is a little bit different. 
I do the same thing. I do exactly the same thing. In fact, um, I often, instead of getting the line straight out behind, I often teach the roll cast or even the jump roll for the same, for that same reason is delay, delay, delay. Or I like the, um, um, the, the, the term backslash, 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 forward slash. That's another way it can be looked at. I think I might have talked a bit, a little bit about this last time. You know, it's really about keeping the power out at the beginning of the stroke and then applying it at the end through a rotation. It's not another common fault I see is people trying to put the power straight to the target. It's not about applying the power to the rod straight to the target. It's about when we get there, we we apply the power to the rod grip. As we've come forward, we get to this rod grip and we're applying the power around, right? We're, we're, we're applying torque to this cast. That's how it works. So we're coming through, 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 we get to this point and then we get almost vertically and then we apply the force. Bang. And then you can hit it as hard as you like. Yeah. And I think, Paul, that's one of the reasons why a rod bends as well is because when we're applying, when, when we're rotating the rod butt at the end, it's a straighter tip path, um, which is, I think, why why a rod bends. It's not it's mm. not rod lows like what a lot of lot like what what like a lot of people say nowadays. Well, they have been saying it for twenty years, haven't they? It's been like, it's been disproven. They've probably about been saying 20, it for hun years. hundreds of years, but it's a myth. It's, it's not, not a giant like... spring, is it? No, no, it's what? no. It's a, it's only a it's a part it's a partly spring, but it's mostly a um, it's mostly a lever, isn't it? Mm. so yeah and i think forgetting about rod loading is a, i think because when you think about rod loading you're thinking about putting the power in aren't you you're trying to bend the rod and i don't think we're trying to bend the yeah. rod i think we're coming through and then we're rotating the rod just and it's it's, it's a much lighter feeling for me it's like i'm trying to float the line out there i'm not trying to bend the rod i'm trying to cast the line when people talk about rod load as well that can cause people to haul at the wrong time. So like mm -hmm. at the start of the stroke. Um, mm -hmm. But if you if you if you don't think about that at all, then just think of the rods. Well, it's it's a it's a flexible lever that lets us move the line as straight as we can. And that's that's a that's 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 a big deal. We're trying mm -hmm. to accelerate the line as straight as we can to and from the target. And I think that's that's a better thing to think about rather than rod load when you as, as you say people hit it at the start of the stroke i've got so, a good cue for this i've been using probably for a few months now um for getting people to apply the force later and i might as well stick it in now because i think it applies at this point and so when i'm i've got you know you've got our targets behind and we've got our target in front and we're casting towards our target in front and i always look at the target in front I don't think you know this hundred feet. We're not so we're not so uh, clued up on looking at the back target. If you can, you can. But really, at the moment, what we're really focusing on is that front target. And as I come forward, I look for this part of the rod. There's about the from about halfway up to about three quarters away up. This section here, I'm looking for that section above me. So I've got my front target. I'm coming forward. I've, I'm come making the cast. I've got my front target and I'm looking for this. And when I see that, that's when I apply the force. So front target, I'm looking, where is it? Where is it? There it is. And then I can go. So I've actually got a visual clue. I can't see the rod tip because the rod's bent, right? But I can see that part of the rod coming into vision. And then I see that and I've got my front target and I try and join the dots. Okay. So that that's that that certainly works for me. And it and the great thing is if you you're not applying the power from here because I can't see the rod. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. There it is, and then I can go. So in real time, it's there. I get it off the off the ground. So it's there. All right. This this drag is really important because it allows us to save rotation until the end of the stroke, which is important. But this this first part is just getting this line moving nicely, and then we apply the force at the end of the stroke, which is where, and and it is it's the bulk of the acceleration. The force is right at the ends, rather than the start. And just do it in slow motion. Just keep the line on the floor, as Jason Borger says in his book. It's only back casts or only forward casts. 
So we're just working on the forward cast launch. So we're keeping this rod angle the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, and then rotate right at the end of the stroke. And you're aiming, what, about 10, 15 degrees? Yeah, I'm 15, 15 degrees up for distance. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, it's important. that, And that's what's going to make the biggest difference. And keeping a relaxed grip as well, that's really important because if you have a death grip, you tend to rotate through the stroke, mm -hmm. which I think is partly with thumb on top as well. Um, so with this this V grip, you can hold it really loosely, really loosely, really loosely, and then rotate at the end. And really think about slinging that line as well. I think Mal talks about tying the end of that line to a rock, wasn't it, Paul? Mm behind you and then getting that going so it's slow 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 and then rotate at the ends yeah drag that's all tied up in the same thing and drag delayed rotation late hit keeping the power out at the beginning of the stroke feeling for the weight of the line as you come forward coming through straight i think that and i and i and i really believe i mean that is probably the single most important thing to go from that jump that we're talking about from that 70 to 100 is applying that power late in the stroke through a rotation as i say looking for the rod coming through i, I find very beneficial but that 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 alone is not enough because we really got to do i think the next key really is to develop carry you're talking about what were you talking 60 70 feet of carry right 60 odd feet of carry right yeah yeah 60 i mean that really is um that that's so important because if you've only got 40 feet and you hit it it's it's still not going to go very far because the loop's unrolled so it's really about developing carry and i i don't know i think the only way to develop carry is to is is really to train developing carry it's 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 trying to hold more line up in the air i remember talking to bruce richards about this many years ago and he did it by marking his line, he would get a, a marker pen and he would mark the line at his maximum carry. And then the next day he would go out and he would try to extend it and try to move the mark further up the line. And I think that's probably, the, 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 uh, you know, that, that is a great way of doing it. And I know open stands distance, we can certainly carry a lot more than 60 feet, but it takes, it's it's really about timing and, and um, speed of the haul and delayed rotation and making sure everything's fairly straight in order to, in order to make that happen. Maybe Definitely. you can show a carry, carry drill. I mean, I don't know what the, what other carry drills we've got. I, I, I would like it to be fairly compact. You know, I don't want to see this arm swinging around while they're lengthening carry. I would like it to be this, you know, this open, close stance and bringing the hand through the shoulder position. James from the BFCC has a really excellent exercise and that's single-handed carry, but without a haul. So what you can start off with is say 40 feet of line. Let me just get out 40 feet of line. I'm going to clamp it under my rod hand. So I'm not going to use the hole. And what we're going to do is we're going to get some nice consistent loops backwards and forwards whilst using minimum force and getting the same type loops as we did in the first video. And then once you're happy, there's no wrinkles in the fly leg, add a meter after that. Let me just get that out straight. And then keep keep going until, until it falls apart and then just bring it back a meter and just try and improve. And what that forces you to do is use delayed rotation on the forward cast and you'll get some nice pointy loops. If you just bowl over, you'll get wide loops that, don't have hardly any energy so it's important to squeeze up on this forward cast nice back cast and just squeeze up on the on the forward cast yeah no that's a great job so yeah so so carry i so and i think you i think the important thing now i think there's one more we're going to add to this as well but before we get there I think it's important to understand that you don't just work on these things once or randomly. You actually have to work on these things in sequence and keep going back and working them in order. 
so you work on your body position and your body movement um uh, you work on your power application you work on your carry and then i think the, 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 the really the, the the thing that we've also got to look at now is the hall and building line speed with the hall and making a a, a more efficient more explosive hall because that's really where it comes isn't it i mean we can we're not actually really looking to put a huge amount more power in to this to the line to, 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 to with the rod but we are looking to increase the line speed and that if you get if you take your 70 foot cast and everything's pretty straight and you add a more explosive pull with a little bit more line carry lay it in the stroke that's really that that's really what it's about isn't it that's one that's going to fly definitely yes the hole a fast a fast hole is the is the is is the key i think and then mm. Once you start to get better, you're actually thinking about casting with your hauling hand rather than the rod hand. So this is just, I don't know, this is just going with the motion, so to speak. So if you think about minimum force with the rod hand and just fast explosive speed with the hauling hand, it will go, it will go miles rather than trying to mm. force it with the rod hand. So mm. think left hand, I think, if you're yeah. right handed and vice versa if you're left-handed yeah i've got something i can add to this this is this is really something i would probably maybe put in a little bit later but it's not a bad area to put it in now because these are always things that we you know always developing and i kind of worked out how my fastest haul is going to be but just get out here at the back of the boat right and on my back cast it is falling from my chest I am pretty sure you must be the same, Nick. So I've got my hand up here and I'm hauling, as I make the back, I hauled, turning that thumb out to a straight arm. And I'm hauling away from the rod. So if the rod's going slightly up in this cast, I'm coming through, bang, the, the haul must be going slightly down. Now, what I commonly see is I see people then trying to get their hauling hand back up to the rod hand. And that's very common to see because it's commonly taught. The problem with this is, I've almost straightened my, my, my elbow in order to reach back. So now all I'm going to do on the forward cast is really going to be like swinging from the shoulder and then a little bit of acceleration from the elbow. And that's not nearly as effective as having a, a strong bend in the elbow. I think we might have mentioned this last time, didn't we? I think so, but... So I'll mention to reinforce, isn't it? Paul? I'll mention it again. So it's I bring this hand in front of the elbow here for, the, for this forward cast, and the, the way I get the rod in front of the line hand is when I turn the body back from this position here. If I've gone here, bang, and I come into this position, I then turn the body round, and now you can see the rod is in front of the line hand. And now I'm in a position where I've got that good bend in the elbow, got late, looking for the top of that rod coming through. And when that happens, that's when I haul. Okay, so it's in there and it's back. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why we twist the top half of our body, isn't it, Paul? Absolutely. One, one, one very important reason is to get that rod hand in front of that line hand. Absolutely. Definitely. It also helps to make everything straight and, it, and it's a better way of applying power. You know, if you if you're trying to apply power, it, you know, it's not very good from here. But you turn in there, you can you've got more force. You can come through, and you you've got better power application. But it, it is definitely about getting that line hand behind the rod hand. So the key, I think, is when you train those pieces, and you've got those kind of pieces working together, then you kind of want to build it into whatever your launch. That's when you want to turn the body get your make sure you're doing these things and as i say i look for the top of the rod coming through as a as a timing cue i think that's a really good really good tip and i and i've and i noticed and everybody i've been teaching that to for the last few months has really had an improvement from that just in their timing it gets them into that position where they're going to apply that force as you say it's a fishing cast really so you don't want to be going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards all the time yeah yeah but, but yeah i think it's wasting time as well 
Yeah, you're wasting a lot of time. So I think what other people, I think on your YouTube channel, asked about, Paul, is when do you shoot line? Because in competition, I only shoot on the forward cast because if there's a strong wind, I want a lovely back cast to go nice and straight. But for fishing, I shoot on both the back cast and the forward cast. So do you have any, did you have any advice about that, Paul? Uh, yeah, no, I do them both as well. Um, for maximum distance, I don't shoot on the final back cast. Okay, I, I, I feel that I do, and I know, and that's only because I've measured it and I get further cast by not. Um, but I can carry more than I need to. The only time I might do that um, uh, is if I'm, if you know, if, if it's a very strong wind and if I could maybe just feel like I could get a little bit more back there. But, uh, but generally speaking, I don't. But when I'm fishing, I do. So, you know, my snakehead shot has all got to do with shooting into that back cast. So, you know, as, as, as a fishing cast, yes. But if you're, if I'm actually trying to throw my longest forward cast, then I get further if I don't. So, oh, here, here would be a training drill for this. Don't just try to launch your longest cast. Throw one at 70, throw one at 75, throw one at 80, and then keep, keep increasing. We can do a nice train drill. I cast pretty similar to you, I think. So mm. use the open stance. My foot is behind the true zero hook on the tape. I've got my weight on my left foot. I'm going to use body weight transfer to help me make the cast. So I'm stretching forward, shoulders are square to the target, twist my torso, body weight transfer, flip the wrist, nice fast haul. There we are, get a lovely back cast and then let it go. And that has landed exactly on the 100 foot cone. So, not again, on the, on the cone. Perfect. On the cone. <laughs> ah, but it wasn't like last time. It's at Actually on the on the base of the cone so oh. <laughs> not on not exactly on top of the cone i should have i should have kept that in <laughs> so there you go hopefully some of that was useful for you if you've got any questions feel free to stick them in the comments below cheers